Hello, my name is Cesar and today I would like to do like a little project. I've uh, been a while since the last time I did like a live coding thing. So I was thinking maybe we could do something like real quick, well, like a half an hour or something. And, and I was thinking about the particle system. So I've done something similar before, but I, I would like to, you know, do it here with, with you. <laughs> And, and see how it goes. Uh, so hopefully we all can learn something together. So let me uh, get a timer and we can probably, let me put like half an hour. Yeah, maybe we, we can, hopefully it won't be less than that, but we'll do like a particle system from scratch and some UI maybe to draw that on the screen. So, okay, so let's, let's give it a try. So let me open a terminal, uh, go to my dev folder, and I'm going to create a, a directory called particles or something. Okay, so this is empty, and I'm, I will be using Python 3.6.3, and I believe I have PyQt5, yes. So this might be, uh, I think I can get the version from Qt Core. PyQt version, oh, 10. Version string. And I have PyQt 5.9.2. Cool. So that's what we're going to use. So let's, uh, yeah, let's get started. So I will uh, do this. Okay, so I need a, a, a new file. I will call it core. Uh, and I can do that. Cool. So this new file, uh, yeah. So let's get started. And the first thing I would need to do is because a particle system, I want to create particles, right? So there are many ways to do this. I will start by uh, creating this class that will, more than a class, just like a struct, it will aggregate a few things. Uh, so the particles will have a position and we're going to use like just lists. I'm going to do 2D because it's easier to to do some UI for it but the computation should be the same on 3D. The other thing particles have is velocity and maybe some mass. Uh, maybe we can do... Maybe we can do that. Okay. So then we need to uh, create particles, right? That will be each particle we have these properties. So now we need uh, an emitter. Uh, and there are different types of emitters. If you ever have done or have used any particle system, they are like directional emitters uh, and they have like a coin angle, just like light. I want to keep it simple, so I will, I will use like a point emitter. So it will emit uh, particles in every direction, like in a random direction. So yeah, in the init, it will have a uh, position, right? Um, a rate of emission, how many particles per, uh, each time we call emit, it will speed out. So let's say 20 by default. Um, maybe some strength, how strong we want this to be by default. Let's say one, and that's it. So the next thing, uh, we will have like a method called emit that will basically emit particles. Uh, so it will for whatever in, so we're going to use a rate and we're going to create a particle each time, so particle. 
and we need to assign to this particle a few initial things like an initial position and initial velocity so let's do a for y in range 2 because a 2d system like we can say like particle dot position y if we equal to self dot position y and particle dot position oh sorry velocity y it will be equals to something so okay so an emitter will emit particles in random directions at a certain uh, speed let's say uh, so we need like a direction times the strength So what's that direction? Uh, we need to figure out, but it will be a random direction. Okay, so how do we get that direction? So I will import random because I probably need to generate random numbers. Okay, and uh, because this method, random direction, doesn't need to know about the emitter itself, I will go to say it's a static method. It doesn't need self, basically. Random direction. Right. So we need to get a, a vector, a 2D vector, that points in random directions, right? So I can say like a raw vector, it's equal to uh, whatever, random for uh, something in range two. So that would create a two component, but this random is, right, so that will be a random number on X and on Y. Uh, the problem is that this random function return a number between 0 and 1 and I want a number between minus 1 and 1 right so I have the whole spectrum that way so one way to do that is say uh, if I multiply this by 2 okay, let's do like the floats like that I will have a number between 0 and 2 and now if I subtract 1 to that, it will be between minus 1 and plus 1. So that's exactly what I want. And now I have a vector that goes each component between minus 1 and plus 1 randomly. The problem now is that uh, the length of this vector is whatever. Uh, it's not like a circle if you want to think of like around the point. It's not a, a I need to uh, normalize this direction. So in order to normalize the stuff, uh, we need the length of this vector. Uh, so how do we get the length? So the length is, uh, we can get it by uh, doing a, a summation, like the sum of the squares of the component. So x squared plus y squared. So for x in row. And I need to take this sum and get the square root of that. Which is, this is just another way to, to say the same thing. So we power to half and that will give us the square root. So now that I have the length, I can return a, a normalized vector and this vector will be, we do like, uh, we divide each component by the length. And now the vector will have uh, one unit of uh, length, no matter what. So the cool thing when we have a normalized vector is that if we multiply that uh, by any number, uh, the length of the vector will be the value of this strength. So if this is 5, the, the length of the vector, the size of the vector, if you want to think in that way, it will be 5. 
if we don't normalize the vector, the length will be whatever. Right? We don't have a way to 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 do that. Uh, so it's kind of important to normalize uh, this kind of stuff. But yeah, anyway, this is our random directions. So that's cool. Uh, so when I emit the particle, it would be cool to be able to collect all of them. So I'm going to yield the particle. I could collect them in a list and return the list. But yield is all right for me. It would be like a generator. Okay, so lastly, we need like a something that will hold the entire thing, right? Like like a world. And we're going to call that a system. It's a particle system, right? So it kind of makes sense. And in the init, so this thing will have particles. It will have forces because forces uh, will kind of move particles around, right? It's a simulation. And it will have emitters that will emit particles. So that's good. And then the other thing we'll need is like a, a method to simulate simulate the particles. And in order to simulate, we need to say like what's the time step for that simulation. So let's say time step will be equals to one. So it's like how much time passed between simulations of between frames if you want to think like in a in a DCC software uh, okay so how do we move particles around because simulation is basically that right so we can start by iterating through all the particles well <laughs> I need to do this properly right Okay, and we need to move the particle around, but uh, what what does uh, affect this position is basically the forces. So maybe we can iterate through the forces. Uh, self dot forces. And the forces, uh, you know, a force is not an, uh, an acceleration or a velocity or a distance. So in order to to be able to use this force, we need to uh, use the mass of the particle, you know, because uh, force is equal to m times a, force equal to the mass times an acceleration. And we have the force, we have the mass, and we need the acceleration. So that means that acceleration will be equals to a force divided by the mass. So we can do just that. Uh, so this mass will be uh, particle dot mass, right? And this force will be force each component. So we probably need to do like for uh, y in range two. So we can uh, kind of calculate this acceleration factor. So we need to add that acceleration to the particle. The problem is the the particle doesn't have like an acceleration component, it has a velocity, right? Uh, so velocity, it's equal to acceleration uh, times time, the time, the time step. So we can do just that. So let's say velocity, it's equal to, uh, yeah, acceleration times uh, the, this time step. So that gives us a velocity. And we need to add this velocity to the particle velocity. So we can say p dot velocity uh, y, and we need to add that. So we basically add that to the velocity of the particle, which is cool. Uh, so once we have that, we can use that velocity to move the particle around. So uh, same deal, uh, velocity is equal to distance on time. Uh, so if we want to get the distance that we need to add to the position, we basically need to multiply that velocity uh, by time. So let's say particle, well, let's say like distance is equal to P uh, 
dot velocity multiply by the time step. Now this distance, we need to add this to the particle position. So we can do it directly. Uh, position Y and we need to add this. So that will basically move our particles around. So other than moving particles, we also need to emit emit particles, right? So uh, for each emitter in self dot emitters, uh, we are going to iterate uh, on emitter dot emit. So each emitter will emit the particles, and then we only need to kind of add these particles to the system. So uh, we are going to append this instance to the list of particles. And that's it, I think. Okay, so I think that's, that's it, unless there's, well, there might be a bug, but we will figure it out. So the next step would be how to see this, how to visualize this thing. So I would like to create like a UI file or something, uh, which is at this side, UI.py, you can see the name of the file there. And I would like to import a, oops, import a core, which is the module, this thing that we just wrote here, it's called core. And I also would like to use Qt to, to like have a very basic user interface. So from iqt5 import qt widgets. This would be like super, oops, super basic. And we probably also need import system. Uh, okay, so we we'll have like a main window. So let's do class main window. Uh, yes. And this will be basically, uh, we'll inherit from qt widget dot q main window. I could call this differently. It doesn't need to be main window, but and for now I would do nothing. So I want to make sure uh, I have like all the boilerplate to be able to run this window. So if I would say if uh, if main, if I oops, if I run this uh, as a if I run this file basically, I want to create an app which is a qt widgets .q application and I need to pass uh, uh, the argument values uh, and then I need to say app.exec so that will init like the application loop and then I can get like, get like my main window which is main window instance and then maybe show that window dot show so this would uh, should yeah this should if I save this and run this should open a little window which is here so good that's it's very small unfortunately uh, so let's fix that uh, so we're going to extend the init method of this thing so self whatever argument whatever keyword argument and we need to go supper and pass in uh, that argument and keyword argument so that way it would do nothing special it would do everything that q main window does plus i can do like self dot uh, set minimum size and let's say something like 600 by 800 this is totally random but it, it just yeah so it's something like a little bit more reasonable okay and uh, let's yeah so let's uh work like a uh, setup layout or something so what uh does this uh, thing need so for this window, I would like to have, I would like to plot the particle system here. 
like have like an image of the particle system i have like a button somewhere to simulate so when i click simulate it will like do one step so i can step through the simulation uh, so that should be very simple to do uh, because fortunately the main windows i can do i can just like the built-in toolbar so if i do add toolbar i can pass like a name main toolbar uh, so now that i have the toolbar i can add like a button to it so i can say like uh, action would be equal to toolbar dot add action and the name would be simulate that they will add like a button and i can even uh, can i hook up this button with something when i when it's clicked when it's triggered so i can say action dot trigger dot connect and maybe self dot simulate so i will call that method that i will create right now And here maybe I will do like a print uh, simulating just for debugging uh, purposes. So if I run this, there's our toolbar, there's our button, and when I click it, it says simulating, which is cool. Nice. Okay, so we have the button. Next step we need like a, a way to draw this a particle simulation so i will use a q graphics framework for that it would be very simple um, you know don't expect anything fancy here i just want to have something on the screen so in order to do that i will need like a scene uh, so this is a qt widgets dot a q graphics uh, a scene right i need a scene so i can add stuff to this scene and then i need like a view and that's a qt widgets dot q graphics view and i need to pass this scene so it will initialize the view with that and then i can say self dot set uh sent central widget exactly that and i set the view so the main window the, the main widget in this main window would be this uh, this view so if i run this uh, the background is is like white because this uh, q graphics scene have nothing on it yet but uh, the, the widget is is there like embedded embedded in the middle so that's cool. Uh, now we need to throw the particles. Well, wait, we need to set up the particle system. So we can maybe can do like set up uh, particles. Okay, so we're going to create um, a particle system that will be equal to yeah core dot system, right? Then we need to add an emitter. So let's say e it's equal to core dot a point emitter cool this will have like a position so let's say zero and 20 or something and yeah and then we need to uh, emitters add this to the system right that's cool then we need like a force i would use like a gravity force and this would be like zero and 9.8 that 81 that's gravity and negative uh we can tweak the numbers uh maybe this is too strong i don't know we will see how it goes and then i need to add uh well sorry uh forces a pen right so I append this gravity force to the forces. And lastly, I need to simulate. Uh, so I will probably need to do like ps.simulate here. 
now uh, this needs to be a member so I can use it uh, in many uh, places so I will change this to self dot underscore I don't know particle system cool uh, so now we have a system in place and the next step is just draw the thing so we're going to simulate and immediately after that we're going to draw that and we need to define that draw method okay how do we draw this uh, I probably need to for p in self dot particle system oh it's not that oh underscore sorry dot particles uh, so I need to get yeah, I need like to draw like a circle, a point. Uh, so I need to add like that to the scene, uh, but I don't have access to the scene. Nice. So let me do the same trick here and change this to self dot underscore scene. Cool. So I can say self dot underscore scene dot add ellipse. That's perfect. And we need like a uh, position uh, X, position Y, uh, the width, which could be one, it's all right, and the height, that could be one. And that's it. So for each particle, it will add this like little circle. And maybe at the beginning, we can do like self dot uh, scene dot uh, clear or something. So we start like from a with a fresh canvas. That sounds good. Uh, yeah. So let's run this and see what goes wrong. So here's my thing, and when I click simulate, oh, something is going on. It looks like like the the gravity is like super strong. So maybe we can we can uh, make that a little bit a little bit uh, like zero point nine. And the other thing, it looks like it was it was going moving f uh, upwards, and that's because the screens usually the zero it's like in this top corner, and they go y in this direction and x in this direction. So we probably need to negate the Y position. So if I run this now and I click simulate, well, gravity is still a little bit strong, but it's, it's, it's looking good. So let's add, uh, let's say 0.1. That's, that's looking good. That's our particle system. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot kind of zoom in. So let's kind of, yeah, do that like real quick. It will be a little bit hacking maybe, but so this view probably have like a, uh, can I see like all the, the stuff? But we have like a event wheel event or something about the the mouse wheel does it wheel event there you go and this give me an event cool uh wheel event okay that's cool so oops, sorry so i can okay this is this is kind of dodgy but anyway let's open some space there and let's say Def will event and I pass an event. Okay, so this event uh, probably have a delta, I think it is. Why? So how how much do we move the thing? Uh, so let's say uh, how uh, delta. 
if uh, delta it's it's greater than zero, I want to view dot set scale. Can I do that? To one, uh, one no view dot scale probably one point one. Else, I want view dot scale uh, zero point nine, and that's it. And then I will patch this very badly. That uh, will event is equal to will event. Don't do this at home. <laughs> that's like a terrible hack right there uh, I don't know if it works so let me have like a few frames let's go can I do of course I cannot do that doesn't have a delta okay so how does this work so let me see the documentation real quick uh, so let's go there uh, list all the stuff and look for wheel event wheel just wheel wheel event and this have uh, an event which is uh, this one and what does this contain come on Uh, can I see like all the things? List of all, yes, here. Yeah. Okay, and these have Q will ban accept delta. Cool. Okay, maybe it's just delta. Can I do that? No, it doesn't have delta. Mm. Maybe Pikuti 5? Damn, I hate this stuff. Okay. So let me, the time is over. So let me go to uh, Qt5, uh, Q, uh, what's this thing? Q uh, graphics uh, view. Yeah, perfect. A list of members, cool. And this have like a wheel event, sure. And this thing, where is it? Here, have a, okay. And this thing have a angle delta, okay. Angle delta. <laughs> And this thing probably have like a Y, maybe, X and Y. So let me, scale, float, float, not enough argument. Okay, okay. 1.1, 1.1. Can I do that? Do I still need, yes, that works. So if I do this, yeah, I can zoom in now. Nice. So that's our particle system. See all the points going down? That's cool. That's cool. Uh, maybe we can do like some collision just to have fun. I know time's over, but let, let's try to add like some floor collision real quick. So let's say Okay, so at this point, we already have a position, right? So if the particle dot position uh, y is, is less than zero, let's say that the particle dot position uh, y will be equal to zero, and the particle dot velocity in y will be, we are going to multiply that by minus 0 0.75. I don't know, 75. So it will lose some velocity on each bounce. 
So let's uh, try that out and see if that makes any sense. So we'll zoom in. We're simulating. Yeah, and you can see how they bounce on the floor. That's nice. So fr from that point on, we, we can do plenty of stuff here, right? We can keep track of the age of the particles, remove particles, do whatever, and have fun with this. And as, as you saw, hopefully, it's not like a big deal. It's not that complicated. So yeah, uh, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something new and see you in the next one. Okay, bye-bye.